Hey folks, I want to tell you about zero divisors in our brain. So it's something that can't happen in fields. A zero divisor in a ring is a non-zero element X such that there's a non-zero element Y so that X times Y is equal to zero. So zero times anything is zero. We've already um, actually proven that. But what's interesting here is that in some rings, you can have two non-zero elements, X and Y both non-zero, but when you multiply them, you get zero. Let's, let's see some examples of this. In the integers mod 10, we have 2 times 5, which is 10, or 0 mod 10. And neither 2 nor 5 are 0, but yet when you multiply them, you get 0. OK. Here's another example. We talked about how um, 2 by 2 matrices form a ring. It's not a commutative ring, because matrix A times B does not need to equal matrix B times A. However, matrices have a commutative subring, the diagonal matrices. I have elements A and D on the diagonal. And here in this commutative subring, um, um, we'll, 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 we'll see some zero divisors. So to get an example of, of a zero divisor, First, let's let D be zero, okay? And let's let A be something non-zero like three. Well, let's multiply this by um, another diagonal matrix where A is zero and D is non-zero, maybe four, okay? When I multiply these two diagonal matrices, I line this up. Well, this column zero, so I'm going to get zero. And then for the bottom left entry, I line these up. OK, <laughs> everything's zero, so I'm going to get zero. Top right entry, I line this up. This is the interesting one. Neither row nor column is all zeros, but still I get 3 times 0 plus 0 times 4, which is zero. And then the bottom right entry, I line that up and I get, well, the rows all zeros, so I'm gonna get zero. And this is a commutative subring. If I multiply these two diagonal matrices in the opposite order, I would get the zero matrix. So neither of these matrices are the zero matrix. You know, I'll just write that as not equal to zero, but really I mean not equal to the zero matrix. Whereas this matrix is, is the additive identity. OK, let me talk about one more uh, ring that has zero divisors. Consider the set of all uh, functions from the reals to the reals. In our last video, we saw that's a ring. But we could definitely have zero divisors here. So maybe I have a function f that's zero on negative inputs, and it's, it's zero on the input zero, but then you know it wanders off and, and does something else for positive inputs. And pretend I have another function g that's zero on non-negative inputs, but then you know when I put in negative inputs, it could wander off and do anything. Okay. Now when I look at the product f times g. Remember that the product function is not the composition function. The product function, I just multiply inputs um, pointwise. So if my input is, is non-negative, well, f is going to be 0. You know, I, should, I should write this out. You know, what is f times x? Ah, what is f times g, this product function of x? It's equal to f of x times g of x. So if, if my input f is non-positive, then f of x is 0, so I'm going to get 0. And if my input x is um, non-negative, well, then g of x is 0, so I'm going to get 0 coming from that term. Okay. So here we have two functions, f and g. Neither function is the 0 function, but in this ring, their product is the zero function, the additive identity. 
All right. Any public questions about zero divisors? <laughs> <laughs>